what is the best password manager in 2021? Welcome to the year 2021. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another review. And in this one, we are asking the question of what is the best password manager? Yes, we are finally back in the much requested video of the top password managers following up from the last video, which I made in 2020, which had a ton of comments and feedback. Thank you to everyone who watched that one. Now there have been some big, big announcements from the likes of LastPass and Dashlane early this year, which significantly change the way that their products work. So I've genuinely been looking forward to making this video or remaking this video as we take a look once again at all of the top password managers to see which one comes out best overall. And no, Zoho, I didn't say you were one of the best password managers in the market. I said you're one of the best free password managers. Technically, I didn't even say best. I think I said fully featured. Flashback. One of very few free password managers that has a pretty fully featured product with, with no restrictions around numbers or devices or passwords that it can store. Anywho, if you are looking for the best password manager in 2021, the best password manager for Mac or best password manager for PC, then watch on. First up, and to those of you new around here, hi, my name is Pete. And on this channel, you can find more tech reviews like this, including cloud storage, online backup, the odd Apple versus Android debate, and a weirdly popular Oculus Quest video. So if any of that interests you, then please consider subscribing for more, as it would be highly appreciated. Now, there are a ton of options when it comes to password managers. It can be completely overwhelming and hard to know where to start. So in this video, I'm going to run through my top five picks, covering all of their strengths and weaknesses to help you decide which is best for you. And make sure to stick around until the end, because after we've looked at those top five, I'll also briefly run through some of the other password manager options just to cover those off too. And first up, ground rules. We are going to be looking at LastPass, Bitwarden, 1Password, Dashlane, and Keeper. And for each of those products, we're going to be covering off security, ease of use, support, any major frustrations, and of course, pricing. And with that said, if you are looking specifically for a free product, then go watch this video instead, as it specifically talks only about the freebie products. And I'll also be covering off some of the other password managers that people requested on my last video at the end of this video. So stick around for that one. After I have completed this review, I'll also head online to see if I can find any discounts available for each of these products. So if there are any, I'll be sure to link them in the description down below. And to be clear, I'll be signing up to each of these password managers myself, literally paying with my, my own money and signing up for the full products, no trial periods or anything like that. And I'm not being given anything or sponsored to say anything here. This is 100% independent. With that said, don't forget to smash the like button because smashy smashy YouTube. Uh, but no, really, it, it really helps these videos get seen by more people, which in turn means the channel grows, which means I can continue making these videos for you as I continue my journey of becoming a full-time YouTuber. So yeah, tell your friends. First up, LastPass. LastPass has received a lot of press over its decision to change their free plan into something that basically makes it useless to most people, but more on that in a moment. In the security department, you do get 2FA as standard, including more advanced biometrics and YubiKey security, which is all good stuff. In the pay plans, you do get dark web monitoring, which today is just a buzzword for, well, your passwords have leaked. Not really monitoring like the dark web, change my mind. You do also get emergency access, which lets you grant somebody else access to your passwords in the event of death or injury. Something which you can configure, but kind of lowers the overall security since then LastPass must know the description keys to your data to be able to give other people access to it. Again, more on that later. But lastly, a recent report from security researcher Mike Maquettes uncovered that there are seven trackers embedded within the LastPass Android app, which shouldn't really be there. Now, these trackers aren't doing anything malicious, but they shouldn't really be there, especially considering you are storing your sensitive information like passwords, bank information, and, and secure documents. Four trackers are from Google. One of them is a tracker which gathers information for, guess what? Marketing. Gathering information like the type of device you're using, whether you're using biometric security. Now, this isn't unique to LastPass specifically, but LastPass is definitely the worst affected. So, um, yeah. For ease of use and first up, we'll talk about offline access. And you can use LastPass without an internet connection. However, you need to enable this in the settings before doing so. So if you are going places without reception, then you'll be wanting to do that. You do get the option of adding custom fields, though I did feel they used to be just clunky and they're not available in everything like when adding cards which can be a pain on something like an Amex card where you have like three digits on the back plus four digits on the front or any other related information that you might want to save. I do like the dark web monitoring service being integrated which scans through all of your passwords, picks up email addresses from those passwords and then suggests to monitor these for any breaches. Though they are just using the same method of a free website haveibeenowned.com where you can sign up and be notified if your email address is breached. And interestingly it told me I had zero compromised accounts when I know that most definitely, my details have been leaked in like 18 times in the various breaches in recent years. So not 
really exactly sure how accurate this is. It also has a feature I do quite like, where it will automatically change passwords for you without having to manually log in and change them. Handy if your passwords are being leaked and you need a like an easy way to change it. Support wise, it's a little frustrating getting to the page where you actually raise a support request. But otherwise, issue raised with them at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, and they came back at well, in under three hours, so that's positive at least. Over in major frustrations, major frustrations. Major craving for a mojito. I did run into just a few issues when using LastPass. Firstly, when I logged in, it kept logging me straight back out again in Chrome. Apparently a known issue. And when I went to the support section in the app, nothing happened. It also kept logging me out, even though I was saying I was logged in at the very top. It was really sluggish to update passwords using the browser and, and in general, I really just struggled to get it working properly. It also failed to fill in my credit card information, even when going to copy it manually. That then involved lots of manual copy and pasting. There's no like quick copy buttons like in other password managers. And then also a minor note, when importing my passwords, it seemed to like randomly select passwords where it wouldn't have stored the email address. Literally like no reason at all for that to happen. And lastly, offline mode. You can't edit anything when you have no internet connection. So, in summary, not a great experience. Pricing wise, it comes in at £2.60 or $3 per month. Though I did notice when logged into a free account, it offered me an upgrade for only $2.25 per month. Probably has nothing to do with the fact that they just screwed all of the people who are using the free plan by restricting it to one device. Probably? No, really. That offer expires on the 6th of May, so yeah exactly what I thought. In summary for LastPass, not one I would personally recommend. You know, again, it just seems that they have the biggest marketing budget and their recent genius marketing, because it kind of is genius, to market the heck out of LastPass with a really strong free product, get everyone invested into their software, but then pull the rug out from under them by announcing those major changes. Whilst it is genius, not really a nice way to treat your customers. I get it, you know, it's a free product. Developers got to feed their family somehow, but there are ways to do it and this wasn't it. Combine that with the seven built-in trackers, including that marketing tracker, and all of the issues I ran into, and it all seems to become clear on what you should be doing next. Smashing that like button. It's just down there. Moving on now to 1Password. 1Password has always been known as the password manager to use on a Mac. It's how I was introduced to it so many years ago because I'm, well, old. But it is now a very capable password manager across all platforms, including Windows. But getting straight into security, and it has all the usual 2FA features, including being able to use a YubiKey for additional security, which is great. And it also has something on their desktop app, which I use regularly, which is the ability to unlock using the Apple Watch, which is just a really nice touch. It has no trackers, not one. Are you listening, LastPass? Yeah, they probably are with their seven trackers. Quick, onto the review. 1Password doesn't know your decryption keys, not even 1Password themselves can access your data. And this does mean that 1Password doesn't offer an emergency access feature that automatically grants someone else access to your data when you're dead. When you dead? <laughs> you dead! Put that cookie down! Because <laughs> if 1Password doesn't know your decryption keys, they can't give someone else access to see your data. This is definitely one of those security versus convenience things. Yes, it may not be as convenient, but it's also definitely more secure. One password has their watchtower feature, which alerts you to password breaches, will only work in verified browsers, and is fully compliant with the likes of GDPR and other industry standards. And then finally, a feature that I've not been able to test out myself, as it's only available in the US right now, but they have a really, really nice feature fully built into one password itself called privacy virtual cards. And these act much like any other digital private bank cards where you create you know, a virtual burner card, so to speak, which means you can create a card to sign up for a specific service. Then if they ever get breached, it doesn't expose your actual bank details. You could also set spending limits so you never spend more than you want. All really nice features, and I can't wait to use those when they come to the UK. Hopefully, please do come to the UK. One password also regularly has their security and privacy audited with the most recent one of the time of shooting this video. I think it's October 2020. And they share all of the findings on the website for all to view. So from a security perspective, a really you know, massive checkbox. For ease of use and tackling the offline access conundrum first, yes, one password does work offline by default with full access to everything. It just won't sync to other devices, of course, because you have no internet connection until you then get an internet connection. Information fills in quickly and easily. It works across all device types and I genuinely don't have any problems using the product at all. I guess the only thing if I really wanted to nitpick would be that when searching in the desktop app and I'm in the wrong vault, which basically is a way of splitting your passwords into different categories. But when I'm in one of the vaults, I then search, then realize I'm in the wrong vault, then click the right vault, the search box gets cleared, which means I have to go and type it back in again, which is a bit of a pain, but like I said, minor niggle. And lastly, 1Password can also store and autofill the 2FA credentials on other websites. And I actually really like this, 
But I do make a point of separating my more sensitive 2FA credentials to a separate app called Authy. Just in case someone did, for, for, you know, for whatever reason, get into my password manager, they would still not be able to get into my most of my, you know, my, my prize possessions, like my email accounts, my bank, my credit cards, Bitcoin wallet. Over to support. I have to hand it to one password. Their team is very good. They respond within hours, sometimes less, and not days like I've seen in other password managers. They have a good community forum and are active on Twitter. Again, just ticks in all the right places. For major frustrations, I don't really have any major frustrations with passwords. You know, personally, it just works on everything and it's secure. If I didn't want to criticize, then I would say perhaps they are too security conscious at times, which just means that you won't get features like you know, password sharing and emergency access because there is no way to do that without sharing your encryption keys. But again, you can't really argue with security being up to scratch. Pricing comes in at $2.99 per month. And also, since I have already made a couple of videos around 1Password, I did reach out to ask for a discount code and there'll be a code down below for 25% off. You're welcome. You're welcome. Overall, 1Password is definitely up there as one of my top picks. The way they focus on security and how good their support is and just the overall products kind of works really well. Next on the list, Bitwarden. No spoilers, but go check out my review on the best free password manager right up here and you'll see what I thought of that because Bitwarden does have a great free product. It also has a great paid for product, but for this section, I'm gonna hand over to a friend of mine who knows Bitwarden inside and out and is gonna run you through his thoughts on this one. We've been using Bitwarden since January of 2020 and I think it's one of the best password managers available today. It's user-friendly, highly secure, includes everything individuals, teams, and businesses require in a password manager. They have free plans that include multi-device sync and 2FA, and also importing from other password managers, making it easy to test out their system with no upfront costs. Some other Bitwarden highlights include strong AES-256 encryption, password security auditing, password breach monitoring cloud, and even local hosting options. They also have advanced support for YubiKey and Duo with their premium versions. Another unique feature they have is the Advanced Custom Fields, which is available for any Vault item type. This allows you to store additional well-structured data on a per-website basis, allowing Bitwarden to fill in more than just username and password, but also unique form elements on website. As a business owner, we are using their Enterprise Plan, which has extended features such as granular user share permissions, password policy enforcement, user audit logs, and single sign-on. makes it really easy to roll out in your organization. They also have added a new feature called Bitwarden Send. It is a trusted way to securely share information directly with anyone, even if they're not a Bitwarden user. This has been kind of handy to use when you have to send something to clients and they have not adopted Bitwarden yet, but you want to get them something securely. It just makes it really simple to do. My overall in Bitwarden is a highly recommend it. Thank you, Tom. And if you're not already subscribed to Tom's channel, go do that. I'll link to his channel down below. The only thing I've got to add to that is something that I've had commented on my last video quite a few times now, is just like LastPass, you can't edit passwords offline. May or may not be an issue for some people, but if you're typically out of internet access but need to edit your passwords, then Bitwarden probably isn't for you. Otherwise, it is a great product. And for the value, just hot. Damn. Now let's look at Dashlane. Dashlane is one of the others who made some major announcements in their password manager earlier this year, where they announced that they would be ditching the desktop version to go browser only around April to June this year, because they say it would give you more reliable performance and a simplified experience. Ugh. For me, I like having a desktop app. So personally, Dashlane is a bit of a no-go for me. I don't want yet another tab permanently open 24 seven. But for those who don't care about having a browser-based password app, then this could be an option still, but Let's carry on anyway. Over in security land, Dashlane has four trackers, again, but why do you need a tracker in there at all? But it's not as bad as LastPass, but they're not as good as 1Password. They do have options for 2FA, including YubiKeys, so that's great to see. Though I wasn't able to find any information about the independent audits, unlike the likes of 1Password and Bitwarden. Over in ease of use, I'll be honest, this is a really difficult one to review. Since they have end of life, the desktop app, which you can still use today for a short time until later this year, but not all the features have yet been put into the web app. So you do have to use the desktop app or mobile app to get to them. Though there is also no list of what these features are. Nice. I don't want to review the desktop app because they've already said that's going, so that seems pointless. But equally, I wanted to find out what features are missing. So I did install it and then it crashed when I tried to import my passwords from 1Password. So I tried to import my passwords in the web browser, but it only accepts CSV and then it failed to import that. Even when using their own template on their own website, it still failed. So overall, in terms of ease of use, it's it's just not a good time to be reviewing Dashlane and comparing it against the other password managers. Whilst it looks like it has great features, I'll, I'll be honest, 
I got fed up of trying to get my data imported. I think it's probably best to come back to this one later this year once they've had a chance to you know, fully convert to the full browser only, as it looks like they're not quite there yet. Now, pricing wise, it's currently very, very reasonable, as when I signed up for my full account, they gave me a link that gives anybody else six months free access, plus it then gives me six months free access. Does anybody else smell LastPass? I think we've been here before. To me, this just sounds like a bit of desperation to get customers to sign up for free, get all their data in, which at that point, as I'm finding out, can get quite tricky to move away from. So overall thoughts, not quite ready. Next up, Keeper. Keeper is one I blasted a little bit in my last review since I was reviewing their free you know, trial product, which was very heavy in terms of spamming me with notifications and trying to get you to upgrade to their full paid for plans. But this time is different as I actually wanted to review the product as a paying customer to make sure I'm you know, getting the same experience and features that actual paying customers would get. Though, it was interesting to see comments to say that Keeper had been sending people to my video to leave positive comments on it. Very interesting. For security, well, Keeper is the only other company aside from 1Password that has no trackers in their software. So that's a great start. There is an emergency access feature for where you are incapacitated. And you can also securely share records with other people. Again, for this convenience of being able to quickly give access to people, there's always a certain risk of security, but it is always a trade-off in convenience versus security. They publish a lot of security information online and have an active bug bounty program, which are all, again, really great positives. Notable differences here on the other apps are that dark web monitoring is an additional 150 a month, and they have secure file storage and sharing at an additional 70 pence. Over to ease of use now, and, and good news is that offline mode is supported with Keeper, where you can fully edit your passwords whilst being offline, so that is, you know, a good thing. Bad news, I have to say, and this is kind of a major frustration, as well in failing in the ease of use section, but what I said about earlier about the constant spamming to upgrade, I thought that by signing up and paying my own money this time to buy the full license, this would be solved, but no, because logging into my web dashboard, I'm presented with this down the bottom. Okay, cool. I thought I'd check my account to make sure I was in the paid for premium account, so I go to my account settings, BAM! Another prompt to upgrade to the family accounts. What about signing into the iOS app as a fully paid for user? BAM! Another prompt to turn on secure file storage for an additional fee with a pretty unfair stay unprotected button if you want to opt out. Log in on another computer? BAM! Another prompt to review the product. Jeebus! Personally, this kind of repeated prompting just does my head in. I signed up for what I need, so why they feel the need to continually hassle me to upgrade is, is just beyond me. It feels like they're either trying to get me to pay more, which they are trying to do, or try to get them more customers, which in turn feels like they're less interested in making a good experience for me, more interested in their bottom line. If none of that puts you off, then there's also a prompt, bam, to refer a friend. They'll pay me 15 pounds if you click on my link below and sign up for Keeper. Pricing for Keeper Unlimited comes in at £2.49 per month. However, there does seem to be a huge number of discount codes available, so I'll try and include one or some of those down below if you still want to sign up after watching this video. But on price specifically, it's, I mean, it's pretty reasonable. And to be honest, I am happy to pay for a product that will secure my data. And though their practice of spamming me with essentially what are ads, you know, whilst being a paying subscriber, I can't argue that they don't seem to be one of the more security conscious tools that I've come across, you know, along with the likes of 1Password and uh, Bitwarden. With that said, and my overall thoughts on Keeper, well, I still actually prefer the likes of, you know, 1Password and Bitwarden, given that you pay once and you aren't continually bombarded with, with why you should upgrade again, and with a security that is just as good as Keeper. Okay, recommendation and summary time before we get into the quick rundown of all the other password managers that I've not touched on yet. In my opinion, you kind of can't really go wrong with any of these, as ultimately the fact you are looking at a password manager will make a huge difference to those of you who aren't. When it comes to security, I would weigh in and say that you know, 1Password, Bitwarden, and Keeper are really strong contenders here. And if you take price into account, then Bitwarden really is a strong contender. But I'm still personally a fan of 1Password, particularly as it has that offline access where I just know that I'll be in a situation where I have no web access but need to update something, which is something that Bitwarden won't let you do. I also do like the slick UI, how seamlessly it integrates with everything I use, cross device, cross platform, and I like how they are really focusing on security and customer satisfaction instead of just throwing money at marketing <coughs> or trying to just constantly force you to uh, upgrade. <coughs> Last pass, ah, 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 more like hard pass. <laughs> they seem to be focusing more on marketing than privacy, given that they sponsor pretty much every YouTube video I've watched lately, and, and there's even a marketing tracker in their Android app. No thanks. Keeper, it is a real shame. I actually like the product and it worked well for me. It has that offline mode and no trackers. Minor frustrations with things like dark web monitoring being an additional cost kind of put me off. But the real kicker for me is just the fact it seems to still, even, even as a fully paid up customer, 
continually prompts me to upgrade and pay more. When I want to log into something, I want to log in, not find my way past prompts, which are effectively just pop-up ads for their own service. So in short, for me, in my opinion, it's 1Password as the winner. Bitwarden, so, so close in second, like, like a hairline away. Then maybe Keeper and joint last place to Dashlane and LastPass, though, I think Dashlane will be different once they actually get around to doing their full web-based application. And if you do want to sign up for any of those, then there'll be links in the description for any discounts I can find. There are my top five, but what about all the others? Well, I could literally sit here all day and review all of the others because there are just so many available. And to those of you asking me to review Nordpast and Roboform, thank you, I see you. And yes, those reviews will be coming very, very soon. But for now, let's take a quick look at the other password apps out there, which you requested in my comments on my last video. After, of course, you hit that like button and subscribe if any of this has been useful to you as that really, really helps me out on this yeah, whole YouTube algorithm thing. So, um, thanks very much. KeePass is a 100% free password manager. It's designed for more techie people. So, if you want to share passwords with your coworkers in your office or, or need a very good, very configurable, but simple password requirement, then take a look at this one. Since it's installed locally, then you have less to worry about in terms of security and uptime because it is all in your hands. Though, for some people, that's probably more of a liability than a, a good option. It's not too difficult, but for the majority of people watching, it is a lot of work when like the other apps generally just work. The client apps themselves are also mostly written by third parties, and I'm never really that keen on using third party applications when it comes to sensitive stuff like your passwords and you know, credit card information. Roboform is a pretty inexpensive password manager. It is it's very good at filling out forms and does work with M1 Max, but otherwise it does include some of the usual features, password sharing, 2FA, but otherwise doesn't have those additional features like you know, dark web monitoring, emergency access, file sharing, and, and such that the other apps do have. But with that said, the price point is super, super low and cheaper than almost every other password manager out there. Sticky Password is fairly unique in its offering as it has an option for a lifetime license. You can also save a manatee when subscribing, which is really bizarre, but hey. But otherwise does also have a good feature set, though I couldn't actually find any reports of independent audits Correct me if I'm wrong. NordPass seems like another strong offering. That actually looks like it almost copied the 1Password interface. Interesting. This one I'm actually going to make a, a separate video on, so look out for that one soon on the channel. And then finally, NPass, which I did briefly look into. And whilst the product itself looks good, I did come across a forum post from 2016, which is still being up to today, or well, as of late 2020, with people commenting on how they won't commit to full audits or penetration testing, stating that they are working on it. And with the only audit they did perform, identifying them as medium risk, with the possibility of recovering the master password from memory of both Windows and Android apps. Probably not one I would look at, in all honesty. If you like this video, then why not check out this one where I talk about the best VPN service, or this video around the best 4K streaming device for 2021. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, give the video a thumbs up if you did, or if you didn't, let me know how I can make you feel better by leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.